While its name seems more like it belongs in an episode of Game of Thrones, this mythical looking tree is indeed of this realm. The fandom that surrounds it, however, certainly rivals that of any blockbuster fantasy series. That's because when you cut it, it oozes blood red sap that has the power to heal. This is the Dragon Blood Tree. Hey, I'm Tasha the Amazon, and you're watching Floral Logic. Today, we're talking about a tree that has its place among myth and legend the Dragon Blood Tree. Sometimes also referred to as the Socotra Dragon Tree, it's earned its name thanks to the ruby red sap that it bleeds. Dracena cinnabari is a member of the dragon tree genus, which includes over 120 trees and succulent shrubs, spread mostly across Africa, Southern Asia, and Northern Australia. This exclusive species, however, only grows high in the mountains and on the plateaus of a string of tiny islands called the Socotra Archipelago. And the dragon blood tree is hands down the most iconic resident. Located in the Indian Ocean, about 340 kilometers southeast of Yemen, the Socotra Archipelago is made up of just four islands and two rocky islets, which researchers believe have been isolated from the mainland for around 15 to 18 million years. Because of this isolation, Socotra has evolved some seriously unique flora and fauna and has been dubbed the Galapagos of the Indian Ocean. 37% of its 825 plant species don't occur anywhere else on Earth. Other than the dragon blood tree, examples of plant species endemic to Socotra include Dendrocissios socotranus, a member of the gourd family, and the Socotran pomegranate Punica protopunica, which is the only other species in the pomegranate genus. There's also Socotrine aloe, the incense tree family member Boswellia socotrana, and the giant succulent Dorstenia gigas, just to name a few. And that's just the flora. Most of this archipelago's fauna is also totally unique. 90% of its reptiles and 95% of its snails, for example, can't be found anywhere else in the world. The name Socotra originates from Sanskrit, meaning island abode of bliss. And to look at the haven of biodiversity you'll find here, nature lovers will definitely find themselves in their special kind of heaven. Dragon blood trees, weirdly, are part of the asparagus family. Many common house and garden plants are part of this family, including spider and snake plants. But unlike asparagus, whose only superpower is to make your pee stink, dragon blood trees ooze bright red resin that has the super ability to heal. In addition to using the sap as a pigment for dyeing, painting, and in spiritual ceremonies, dragon blood tree resin has been used in traditional medicine for thousands of years, with records of its application ranging from ancient Greece to China. It was usually used to treat pain, as well as ailments of the skin, eyes, teeth, and gastrointestinal tract. Recent studies have investigated dragon blood sap and found that it's even more powerful than we originally thought. In addition to being an antiviral, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, pain reliever, and an antioxidant, it also contains properties that may heal wounds, combat diarrhea, ulcers, and tumors, and improve circulation and immune function. One study found it to be so effective as an antimicrobial that it could even be considered as a viable food preservative. Dragon blood trees are extremely slow growing, but can eventually reach heights of 10 meters and live to be 650 years old. They have wide umbrella-like canopies that kind of look like the giant tree version of an oyster mushroom. While it may seem like a fluke of nature, its kooky appearance actually evolved for good reason. Dragon blood trees are xenomorphs, sorry, xeromorphs, meaning that they've adapted characteristics that protect them from excessive water loss, something they need real bad in their extra arid environment. First off, they have smooth, light gray bark, which helps to deflect sunlight. This serves much the same purpose as the bark of the famous giant Madagascar succulent, the baobab tree. Be sure to check out our video to learn all about those bubble letter lookalikes. The hard leaves of the dragon blood tree are extra long and narrow and are adapted to prevent water loss during long periods of heat and dryness. These specialized leaves are able to capture the frequent mists that pass through their mountainous habitat. The mist condenses into water droplets on the tough, waxy leaves and drips down onto the soil below. The super dense canopy above prevents these precious droplets from evaporating in the sun before the tree's roots can absorb them. But even the best evolved protections can't save this plant from modern threats like overgrazing, habitat loss, overexploitation of resin, and climate change. Because they grow so slowly, dragon blood trees are extremely vulnerable to grazing animals. Unregulated overharvesting of the sap has also caused numbers to dwindle. 
Conservation efforts, however, are ongoing to ensure these incredible dragons don't truly become things of myth and legend. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. Bye. Put that sap on everything. Oh, I'll just slow it right down. Oh, I'll just slow it right down. I love plants. I'm surrounded by plants. I need some red zap! <laughs> you know, I'm, with you guys. I'm so sorry.